So, how do you succeed in life? This is a question I struggled with for a very long time, and it's the question I propose to you today. UC Irvine says that to succeed in life, you have to work hard, really hard. If you ask my mother, she would say the way you succeed in life is by pursuing something you're passionate about and not procrastinating. If you ask my father, he would say the way you succeed in life is by making a lot of money doing what you love. But if you ask my nine-year-old neighbor, he would say the way you succeed in life is by reaching the unreal rank in Fortnite Battle Royale. Contrastingly, in true modern fashion, you can ask the world's best answer provider, ChatGPT, and it will tell you an error occurred. So, for me, I've taken what they've all had to say into account. Maybe not all of them, but definitely most of them. For a very long time, I thought the way to succeed in life was by doing as much as possible to prepare me and give me experience for university, for my career, and more broadly, my future. In just my senior year, I took part in not one, not two, not three, but eight different activities trying to succeed. I took up a passion for jazz music, learned languages, did extracurriculars, did internships, and so much more. But I was wrong. That wasn't the solution. In fact, it was the root cause of a whole other problem. By trying so hard to succeed, I pushed myself academically, and I believe this is what made me the odd one out, both socially and academically. In middle school, I qualified to join the Gifted and Talented program, and to my dismay, that wasn't a place where you got gifts for performing at a talent show. So, now that I had this, what's the problem? Well, according to Dr. Meredith J. Green, an educational consultant and professor at the University of Connecticut and Bowling Green State, gifted and talented students often suffer from issues of multi-potentiality, the overemphasis on academics, and the expectations of others. I want to highlight the overemphasis on academics part. There is a strong consensus within the educational psychology community that gifted and talented students are more susceptible to depression and social and emotional issues. Studies have also shown that regardless of background, these difficulties can manifest in the form of peer exclusion, isolation, stress, anxiety, and depression. Studies have further shown that gifted and talented students had a worse perception of their physical health. And for me, this perception slowly turned into a reality as I prioritized academics and everything else I took part in over my own physical health. And as you can probably tell, I put on weight from not exercising. To illustrate how badly my health deteriorated, I want to show you a modern art piece. Now, just like modern art, there's more to it than meets the eye. This was, in fact, my schedule on a good day, or rather a good week. And it was packed. I had activities occurring simultaneously, and I couldn't maintain my commitments. And the day after my mother showed me what you just saw, we both decided to get my life back on track. So, I resigned from numerous activities, and with my newfound free space, I started participating in kickboxing classes. By being more confident with my physical health, I knew my mental health would also improve which is why today, three years later, I stand before you as a changed man, a happier man, but most importantly, a healthier man. But how did I achieve this? Was it just through exercise? In a study by Rin and Winninger, they found that gifted adolescents who engage in sports felt better about themselves than those who didn't participate in those activities. So in an effort to try and understand what I was going through, I came across a very popular diagram among students. It's a pretty no joke. It's called the typical breakdown of a college life, and it's comprised of three circles. So in the first circle, you have good grades. In the second circle, you have sleep. And in the last circle, you have a social life. So what do you call someone who has good grades and a social life, but no sleep? Well, they're a zombie. Ooh, because they got no sleep. They walk around dead. That's a funny joke. If you got good grades and sleep, but no social life, well, you're a nerd. Hate to break it to you. Now, if you get social life and asleep, but you don't have good grades, well, unfortunately, you're a slacker. But you'll notice that there's a middle part in the middle that I haven't talked about. Well, what if you have all three? It's important to know that mainly you can only get two. Well, if you have three, you defy the laws of physics. That's just not possible. So, you'll notice that in the diagram, 
there's no mention of sports or well-being. And for me, that was a key factor. And I feel like this resonates with something I felt and presumably many others too. Sometimes in life, we struggle so much and we strive so much to succeed that sometimes we end up failing in the most important aspects. And for me, that was my own well-being. So, bearing that in mind, according to the University of Michigan, they found that 80% of students based their sense of self-worth on the grades they would achieve. And why wouldn't they? Like me, many grew up in systems of education where academics remain the sole focus. So, let's take the circle, let's shrink it down. Pretty cool effect. And then, bam, let's add in sports, right there. You'll notice that we still have that center part, and that raises an important question. How can you defy the laws of physics? How can you achieve the impossible? Well, this raises and is in fact the point of my talk today and why I speak to you. Our definitions of success will vary from person to person and as someone who was the odd one out for his entire life, I challenge you to become the odd one out and find your own definition of success. Our definitions will vary based on age, experience, time, and our own personal desires. For instance, my father, a finance major, would of course have money as his key defining factor. My mother, an educator, would of course have passion as her key defining factor. And despite it, my nine-year-old neighbor, a huge fan of Fortnite, would of course have his rank status in the game as his key defining factor. But I have no idea what ChatGPT wants. So, if you are struggling to succeed or failing in certain aspects of your life, then what can you do? Well, there's a three-step plan, and step one is to Evaluate what you are doing well. In order to achieve what you perceive as success, you have to first give yourself credit for the areas in your life that you are skillful at. What are the hobbies, activities, or classes that you take pride in doing? And this keeps you in check. You are trying to improve yourself, not restart from scratch. So now that you've evaluated what you're doing well, this brings me to the second step, which is identify areas of your life that you want to improve on. And it doesn't have to be big. It may seem impossible at first, and here's where you have to be honest with yourself. No one is perfect, not even me, unfortunately. And in order to achieve what you perceive as success, you need to first evaluate what you want to improve upon. And by doing so, you are bringing yourself closer and closer to the light at the end of the tunnel, which in this case is success. And this will be unique for everyone. It might be changing your current habits. It might be studying more for students. It might be Forcing yourself to take breaks, this will be unique. So now that you know what you're good at and you know what you're bad at, this brings me to step three, which is to make yourself a plan. And it may seem intimidating at first if you don't know where to start, but, but by writing something down, by giving yourself an idea, by giving yourself a visual representation of how you want to succeed personally on just a one-page piece of paper, by doing that, you are literally setting yourself up for success. So. How do you succeed in life? Title of my talk. Well, I believe the answer is by fulfilling yourself. Keep yourself busy doing what you love, but not to the point where you begin failing in the most important aspects of health, harmony, and happiness. And that's why today, three years after that picture was taken, I stand before you, continuing to strive for success and improving myself. And now I hope you can. Too.